The Republic of Indonesia. Southeast Asia's most vibrant democratic country will soon be voting for two of their government branches, the executive and legislative branch. For the first time in the country's history, the presidential as well as the national and local legislative elections will be held on the same day, April 17th. With the elections only a month away, this is a good time to look into the country's political system and understand what we're voting for and how it will shape our lives for the next five years. Indonesia has shifted through a number of political systems since its independence in 1945. Its latest period is known as the Reform Era, which began after the resignation of the authoritarian president Suharto in 1998. This prompted a major governmental reform, including four constitutional amendments and several new laws that shape the current political structure. Some of the most important changes include limiting presidents to two terms of office, establishing a direct popular elections rather than a parliamentary one, reorganizing the government model into a separation of powers, and greater emphasis on decentralization of power to local administrators. Indonesia's political system separates its powers between three government branches, the executive, legislative, and judicial branch. Each is given certain powers by the 1945 constitution in order to check and balance the other branches, meaning each branch can limit the power of other branches to ensure that none can overpower the other. In short, the legislative branch is responsible for making the country's laws, the executive branch enforces them. Meanwhile, the judiciary interprets the law and how they should be applied. But to fully understand how Indonesia's political system interact with each other, we need to take a closer look into each branch and what their responsibilities are. The executive branch is probably the most well-known sector in the government. It is headed by the president and vice president who are elected for a maximum of two five-year terms. The current head honcho is President Joko Widodo who is running for re-election and the soon-to-be-retired vice president Yusuf Kala. The President of Indonesia serves as the Head of Government, the Head of State, and the Commander-in-Chief of the National Armed Forces. Helping the President govern on the provincial level are the regional heads. This includes governors, district heads, and mayors. Regional heads receive advice and input from a regional representative's body, or DPRD. The executive branch can be the source of certain types of laws, such as decrees and executive orders but they are only able to propose bills and state budgets to the legislative branch. Still, the power of the president and his ministers today is quite overarching. It can affect the prices of our meals, online transportation trips, where we can build our house of worship, determine what kind of online games we play, or even put us in jail for some stupid comments we say online. The president controls the military and law enforcement, which includes the national police and attorneys. The president also appoints ministers to help him in domestic governance and foreign affairs. Now, while ministers' appointments do not need parliamentary approval, due to the need of maintaining the ruling coalition, the elected president may be compelled to accommodate politicians in certain ministerial positions instead of appointing impartial professionals. This is why we need to pay attention to the political supporters behind each presidential candidate and ensure that they are in line with our values. The legislative body consists of the People's Consultative Assembly, or MPR. Now, the MPR has two parliamentary chambers, the House of Representatives, or DPR, and the Regional Representatives Council, or DPD. Both chambers represent the general interests of their electoral districts, but only the DPR has the power to formulate and pass bills, as well as to approve state budget proposals. While the DPD's constitutional role is to provide legislative advice on issues affecting its respective regions. Members of the chambers are elected through the upcoming legislative elections. Now, while the DPD candidates run on a nonpartisan basis, the DPR candidates are required to be a member of a political party. And there are a lot of them. Indonesia has 73 political parties registered in the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights and 16 of them are participating in the 2019 legislative elections. In total, there are 7,968 candidates running in the upcoming elections across 80 electoral districts. While the House is the engine that drives the passing of bills, it falls onto the judicial branch to ensure that the bills are in line with the 1945 constitution. The judicial branch consists of judiciary bodies 
whose primary function is to maintain the court system in the country. The highest level of judicial branch is the Supreme Court and the Constitutional Court. The Supreme Court is the final court of appeals for criminal, civil, military, and religious cases. The court conducts judicial reviews on a case-by-case -case basis when new evidence is presented. It also supervises high and district courts as well as solves disputes between them. Supreme Court justices are nominated by the President before going through a fit and proper test by the House of Representatives. Meanwhile, the Constitutional Court has jurisdiction over matters involving the Constitution as well as disputes regarding political parties and elections. The Court conducts judicial reviews over laws to ensure that they are in line with the Constitution, and it has the power to strike them down if they are not constitutionally sound. It also has the final say over any attempt to impeach the President. Constitutional Court justices are nominated by the House of Representatives and the Supreme Court before being appointed by the President. Indonesia is a young nation with an even younger democracy. But in the years since our country became a republic, it has matured into Southeast Asia's most vigorous autonomy. And understanding its political system is not a one-night crash course. It requires a continuous and constant observation of our democratic scene. And with the upcoming 2019 simultaneous elections just around the corner, it is more important now than ever to spend some time to be more active in upholding our social responsibility.